Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. Game. Uh, I'm Mr. Gaming Guitarist. The Game Awards is in a few hours, but um, earlier this morning, I found out that Street Fighter V has been leaked, and um, and I think this was supposed to be announced on Saturday during the PlayStation Experience. And it's a bummer. It really, really, really is. Because, I mean, this is Street Fighter. Street Fighter! And it just gets leaked. Uh, you know, and so there's two main points that I want to talk about with this. So first, uh, let me just talk about the, or the, um, the details that we know so far about Street Fighter V. A little bit of background for you. I do not, uh, I am not a Street Fighter fan. I, I respect it, but I don't play the game, frankly, because I suck shit at it. And it's like that with me in all fighting games. I mean, pretty much the only fighting game that I am, that I can say that I am decently proficient at would be uh, Super Smash Brothers. But the traditional fighting games where you have two characters uh, going at it with the health bars and the combos and all and all that stuff, I'm just uh, I'm not that. They're not. I'm. Oh my god, my brain is getting scrambled. I'm not that very good at. So I have all the respect in the world for people that love fighting games. I like them, but I'm just not the absolute best or good at them. So the biggest news to come out of this is that other than the fact that, that Street Fighter V is in development, is that it's going to be exclusively on PlayStation 4 and PC. And I don't like that. I don't. I don't like that at all. Because, here's the thing. I don't know, this could just be a sign of my ignorance, but I don't know, think, I don't, and if I am wrong about this, uh, please correct me in the comments below, but I don't think that the fighting, that there is that many people that play fighting games on PC. The amount of people that play fighting games on PC is nowhere near the amount of people that are currently playing fighting games on the Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I feel like. So I, I feel it's really, really strange that this is only going to be on the PlayStation 4 and the PC. I mean, isn't... Because when I think of fighting games, my brain immediately jumps to consoles. Uh, I don't think about PC. It's not the first, second, or heck, even third thing on my mind when I think about where do people play new, modern fighting games on. I mean, the thing is, you know, this is, okay, and this is a sign, okay, I mean, this is me telling you that I'm not happy with, that, with the decision that Capcom, now I don't know if it was Capcom making this decision, or Sony, uh, or Sony giving Capcom an ass load of money, or, um, to cover the cost of the sales that would be on the Xbox One version of Street Fighter V, but it, it's just not right whenever a game, a franchise that is normally multi-platform, that is made by a third-party publisher slash developer, when it has always traditionally been on most of the consoles or most of the platforms out there, and then you take it away from and then you take it away from them. It, it's, it, it, this is really 
the rise of the Tomb Raider all over again, except this time it's reversed. This time, instead of Xbox One players only being able to play this game on for them, for Street Fighter V, this time it's only PlayStation 4. And, you know, I mean, I pro I'm probably not really going to play Street Fighter V, but for all the people that are fans of this franchise, and uh, trust me, believe me, I know, I understand how incredibly fucking huge Street Fighter is. So, I think it is a huge... Uh, unfortunate situation that a large percentage of its potential audience isn't going to be able to play this game right when it comes out. I mean, it reminds me of the time when Soul Calibur 3 came out, and that game was only on the PlayStation 2, and it's not like today, where whenever you get a game where it's exclusive to one platform that's by a third-party publisher and developer, and you think, ah, oh, it, it'll, it's, and it's going to end up being on the other consoles or NPC a few months down the line. It's, it wasn't like that. Soul Calibur 3 was only ever on the PlayStation 2. Now, I don't know if there has been a re-release of it or what, but it just it's just sad. It really, really is. I mean, I, I put... Okay, so here is why, how... Just so to avoid any arguments in the comments below, I want to set myself out straight here. I want to make everything clear uh, for anyone watching this to get my perspective on this. I think that any third-party game should be on as many platforms as it should, and that there should be no timed exclusive DLC or any of that other bullshit. I believe that you it should play as well as the console should make it. I don't want parity. I want each version of the game, I want it to run the best that it can on that platform. I want the Xbox One version to push that console to its max. I want the PS4 version to push the PS4 version to its max. And I want the PC, I want you to put in like a million goddamn NVIDIA GTX Titans in there and set the graphics settings to all your heart's desire. And it should, and I want it to look amazing. That is my, in a perfect world, that's how all third-party video game releases should be, in my opinion. But unfortunately, we live in a world where uh, timed exclusives are a thing. And exclusive DLC is a thing. And uh, parody is a thing. And it really sucks. So, to all the people, so if this game eventually doesn't come out on Xbox One, I'm sorry, that fucking sucks. And there should be petitions everywhere saying, Hey Capcom, release Street Fighter V on Xbox One. Because that's not fair. They absolute, Xbox One players absolutely should deserve the chance to play Street Fighter V, just like PS4 players absolutely deserve the chance to play Rise of the Tomb Raider. So that's that side. The other thing I wanted to tackle on this is the fact that this got leaked. And I hate leaks. I really do. I hate that. I hate it when a bunch of piss comes out of my underwear, and I hate it when a, when information about a video game gets released before the publisher intended it to be released. Okay? It sucks because what it does is instead of building up the hype and the excitement for it to be announced here, it's just completely gone. It's like all the excitement that you had for it, it's just gone. It's completely thrown out the window. And it's a bummer. It sucks because it just takes all the anticipation, the excitement of, of waiting for some earth-shattering video game news to drop, an announcement that's going to shake the world, that's going to make so many people happy and excited. And instead of having it drop at the right moment when everyone intended it to be released, some little asshole goes out and just leaks it. 
you know, same thing with the Assassin's Creed uh, victory thing, the Victorian London Assassin's Creed game. I mean, it sucks that it gets some little asshole leaks it only one month after the latest Assassin's Creed games have been released. I mean, what the hell? I mean, Unity is broken, and it's still not completely fixed yet, and they're already leaking information about the next game, and it shouldn't even, we shouldn't even know about this new Assassin's Creed game until a few months in 2015. It, it just, it, I, I, it's the, that's the thing about this modern, socially connected, social media, internet society that we all live in today. It's the thing like this that really, that I absolutely hate. You know, you can find out anything, and then some, and then all it takes is one asshole to ruin everything for something, and it just, I hate it so much when things like this happen. I mean, the, I would have been so much more excited for all the Street Fighter fans if I saw this happen during the PlayStation Experience keynote on Saturday, but no, instead, it needs, it needs to get fucking leaked. It's just, it's all, it's all fucking bullshit. Timed exclusives are, um, third-party exclusives, I feel like, are fucking bullshit, and I also feel, and leaks are fucking bullshit as well. I mean, just... Yeah, I, I need to get the, all this and all this stuff off my chest, and I hope that you will see a much happier version of me uh, when I talk about the Game Awards whenever that show uh, finishes. And I am very excited to see that finally an award show that's being produced by Jeff Keighley. He is free from Spike and Viacom and all the corporate bullshit. He's going out on his own, and I and I can't wait to see what what's going to happen. So I'm excited to see that, uh, and this has the potential to be much better than any uh, Spike Video Game Awards or the VGX bullshit, and thank goodness for no Joel McHale or any celebrities that don't care about video games in this. So that is it. Um, please like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and I will see you uh, in a few hours when I make my video about the Game Awards. And then the next day when I make a video about PlayStation Experience opening keynote. Alright, uh, and please subscribe to my videos if you haven't done so already. I would appreciate it. Alright, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we shall see if I am going to be happy or very mad uh, after the Game Awards. So, tune in to see that. Alright.